Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell and this is Yash Kumar saying we are talking about starting with a brand new series of tutorials which is going to be the extension of our previous series that is Jira Tutorials. Now in this particular series of tutorials we'll be getting into the administration side of Jira and trying to understand that what privileges and permissions does a Jira administration has in order to customize the tool in order to meet the expectation of the people using Jira as well as the specific specifications of the organization. Of course we remember from the basic tutorials of Jira that Jira is something which can be customized based on your needs and organization specification. Then of course there must be something which allows you to make these changes. And that's what we are talking about today. Getting started with a new playlist which consists of all the options, all the features, what you should know being an administration or administrator of Jira which we will be covering as a part of this tutorial series. So stay tuned and look after to all the videos which we are coming up every alternate day to add value to your administration learnings. So let's get started quickly with a basic introduction to what exactly Jira administration is. In this tutorial, we will be getting started with a basic introduction to what is Jira administration. And the agenda for this particular video is going to talk about what is Jira administrator, Jira administrator architecture, and Jira server instance. To begin with our tutorial, we would like to first enhance and understand that how what exactly Jira Administrator is all about. Of course, in our previous tutorial series, you have understood a lot about the basic interfaces to the Jira software. Now, if you have not been through that, you will find a link on the i button to go to that particular segment and look into that, at least understand that what exactly Jira is all about and how does it work. And just for a quick recall, Jira is a project planning and tracking software which can be used to manage all your tasks related to any type of project which you want to manage and generally allows you to customize things and comes with an inbuilt customization option. That's where Jira Admin gets introduced to. Now, of course, to customize a tool, there must be access provided to any one or maybe few participants of your organization who will be allowed or liable enough to make changes to your organization structure for using the Jira Administrator. Now, of course, Jira Administrator can control the entire Jira tool itself. That means Jira Administrator is a Jira's control panel which allows you to access to customize the tools specific to your organization needs. The Jira Admin also has access to all these options to be customized within the Jira itself. That is workflow, configuration, schemes, user, groups, permissions, sets, roles, screen, setting, anything. There are a lot of such things which you're looking at right now, but probably you don't know what exactly they are and how to do it. Of course, being an administrator, it requires to have patience and of course, a good understanding of everything working behind the screen. Don't worry, I'm not going to talk about the programming and scripting skills yet, but of course, everything is just click based. And every time you just need to do something, there are a few clicks involved, but you must know the architecture in order to understand the same. Now. The most important thing is the architecture itself. Now, of course, when I come to the architecture, it consists of a lot of things put together, but of course, has a continuity flow related between them. Now, of course, when it comes to the uh, issues, we have several types of issues. What if you want different fields to be populated when I go to different types of issues? Now, that's where admin is important. When it comes to the workflow, you know, sometimes your project requires you to have multiple status and sometimes a condition to fulfill a particular status movement. Maybe when I create a particular issue, I need to make sure that if all the details have been fulfilled, if all the mandatory fields have been fulfilled, then only it must be created. In order to move a task from in progress to done, a condition should be met. What is that condition? You will be specifying that in the workflow. That means if someone tries to move a task from in progress to done, it will ask you to check that particular condition. If it is met, then only you can move it. So yes, you this is what you can talk about in the workflow. 
Of course, the people, the people making use of the Jira project or Jira application will definitely have certain different rights. Not everyone gets access to everything in Jira. When you work in an organization, you will have a different role and contribution to Jira projects. Of course, we can manage who are the going to be the users of a particular project or users of the Jira itself and who are going to have certain specific roles in order to customize few of the basic things within the Jira project. And entire thing put together is actually called as your Jira. And finally, you basically work together, being like, you know, managing with all the resources what you may have and the people who are working behind that, putting it all together, you finally deliver a product. Now, that's one of the important thing to understand that what all things will be coming ahead in our upcoming tutorials. But why Jira admin? Isn't it that Jira user has access to modify anything or like changes uh, to the issue which is created, add comments and do a you know, lot of such things? Now, there are a lot of many advanced things which a Jira user will not have access to. You yourself would have understood when you were working on the previous tutorial series that being a user, you didn't have access to everything. So yes, how about creating a new control flow? How about customizing an existing workflow? How about relating a issue type with a new screen? What if a project don't want to use a particular scheme and wants to go with a new one? There are a lot many such things which you will explore in our upcoming tutorials. So why do you think there's a need of customization? Let's have a look. Here, if you remember this slide from our previous tutorial series, I mentioned that which Agile methodology is used in Jira. Jira software is an Agile project management tool that supports any Agile methodology, be it Scrum, Kanban, Mixed Methodology, Scaled Agile, or any of your unique flavor. Now, of course, as you see that, an organization can make use of any of these Agile methodology. Thus, a Jira has to be customized and there is a need for an administrator to control that. So, of course, a team of people or group of people will request the access to the Jira administrator and administrator will fulfill that based on the specifications and the restrictions which the organization may have. Now, remember another thing that Jira administrator is not so demanding subject in the market. The reason is we have limited roles in any organization. For example, we may not have 20 to 25 people controlling Jira administrator because there will be just limited people and we don't want to create a big chunk of people doing some of the common thing which might be conflicting with each other. Okay, so you will have always limited position open in the market. But of course, there's a need to understand that what exactly happens. Because if you know what exactly can happen in Jira, you can always ask your administrator that, hey, admin, can you please add a new issue type? And admin says, ah, no, that's not possible. Then you say that, no, I know that's possible. Go to this section and click on this issue type and you can create a new one. So the Jira administrator can very well do that for you. So being aware will definitely make you more better, more efficient and more effective when you make use of the Jira product. Now, the last thing before we wind up for today's session, that is going to be the type of instance we will be making use of. In our previous tutorial series, we made use of cloud instance. And of course, you had certain quick restrictions with respect to the cloud instance. Now, this time, just to showcase a different interface and working with the most of possible options, we are going to make use of server. So server instance is a physical installation instance where you need to install this on your machine in order to access this within your organization. Whereas cloud instance is remote and anyone can just start installing and making use of that. But of course, there has certain differences between the cloud and the server edition or instance. Now, of course, the cloud is fast to start up, no cost involved sometimes. If you are having limited number of users, no upgrades required, no security clauses, right? But when it comes to server, of course, you have to install, host it, and run yourself. Everything has to be determined by you when you're talking about setting up the server instance. Even you have to be an administrator to know what exactly do you want in your project and how you will customize it. Manage it organization specific feature comes with the server edition, not with the cloud instance. Cloud instance does not really allow you to make any kind of customization which might be possible with the server instance. Plus, you get access to making changes and access to database structure, which you do not have in the cloud. 
So to work with the admin citer, we will be making use of a server instance and working on all sort of things which you might even have not thought about in the uh, tutorial. So stay tuned for more. So team, we will be getting back to you with the very first tutorial the next day in terms of understanding how to set up. So we'll be getting started with the basic installation and the process how to set up and configure your Jira project, uh, Jira software instance with the server instance version okay so we will have a lot to explore because the first and foremost thing is the access itself if you don't know how to set up your server then you will not be able to access jira at all okay so stay tuned for that that's all from this particular episode team should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'm always there to respond to your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning